Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on working energy. The topic of this video is mechanical power, and we want to know how are work and power different than one another, and how can you analyze a physical situation in order to determine the power delivered by an object. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. We'll begin by contrasting work and power. Work has to do with a force that causes a displacement in order to change the energy of a system. But power has to do with how fast that work gets done. There's a time component associated with power. You could have two identical jobs being done in different amounts of time. The one that's done in the least amount of time is done fastest, and it has the greatest power. To illustrate, consider three paths that lead from the base of the hill to the summit of the hill. They each have a different angle. They each require a different time. We want to know which requires the most amount of work and which has the most power. Path A is the more direct path. It goes from the base to the summit in the least amount of time and the least amount of distance. But path B is the path that has many cutbacks leading from the base to the summit and it would require the most amount of time due to its greatest distance. Path C is somewhere in between. Now when we think about the question of which requires the most amount of work, we have to think in terms of energy. All three paths lead from the potential energy of the base to the potential energy of the summit, and as such they each require or each change the energy of the object by the same amount, and so they each require the same amount of work. But path A is done in the least amount of time, and path C in the most amount of time. So A is the path that requires the greatest power because it's the one that's done fastest and path B has the least power. The textbook definition of power is the rate at which work is done. In physics, rate quantities are quite popular and they're always calculated on a per time basis. So when we say power is the rate at which work is done, what we mean is that power equal work per time or in symbol form P equal W per T. You could have two identical jobs, each requiring the same amount of work, but the one that is done in the least amount of time is the one that has the smallest denominator, and as such, it would be the one with the greatest power. It's the one that's done at the greatest rate. The standard metric unit of power is the watt, abbreviated W, where one watt is equal to one joule per second. So, if anybody ever asks you, what's the unit of power? You would say, yes. <laughs> Oh, oh. Come, come on, that was, that was funny. That was like a, a dad joke. Machines are made to do work upon objects, but machines don't have a work rating. Instead, they have what's called a power rating. Power ratings describe how fast that machine does its work, and they're usually listed in the unit horsepower. Horsepower is not a metric unit, but a more historical unit that dates back to the days in which we used to use horses to power most machines. One horsepower is equal to 746 watts. To illustrate the idea of a power rating, let's consider two car engines. This is car A with its 150 horsepower engine, and with that engine, it can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 15 seconds. But this is car B. Car B has a 750 horsepower engine. 750 horsepower is five times the horsepower of car A. And as such, it can do its work at a five times greater rate, which would mean that it could go from zero to 60 miles per hour in one fifth of the time in three seconds. A common lab in a physics course is the personal power lab or sometimes called the staircase lab. In the lab, students run up a flight of stairs, usually at constant speed and as fast as possible, in order to determine their power rating. Here's a lab notebook entry for one such lab. The mass of the person is 82 kilograms. The person climbs 1.8 meters high and does it in a time of 1.03 seconds. To determine the power, we need to first determine the force that the person applies to lift themselves up. We'll assume at a constant speed and then we need to use force and displacement in order to determine the work and finally the work with the time in order to determine the power. The calculations go like this. For the force, we'll say the upward force is equivalent to the force of gravity which is m times g, 82 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram which gives us a value of 803.6 newtons for the force. Now I can calculate the work. The work is the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. So we will go 803.6 newtons times 1.8 
meters times the cosine of zero degrees, and we get 1,446 and some change joules. Now we're ready to calculate the power. We'll go 1446.46 joules divided by the 1.03 seconds, and we get a power of 1,404 and some change watts or rounded to two significant digits, about 1400 watts. This is equivalent to 1.9 horsepower. The power delivered in doing a task depends upon work and time. We've expressed the relationship as power equal work divided by time. If we presume that the force and the displacement are in the same direction, we could call the numerator force times displacement. So power equal force times displacement divided by time. Now the d in the numerator and the t in the denominator might be recognized as the velocity. So the power is equal to the f times the v or power equal force times velocity. So when it comes to a power rating, we can begin to think of it as being the combined influence of force and velocity. If we apply a power rating to a football player, we might say that the lineman with the greatest power is the one that has the greatest strength, applies the greatest force, and the greatest speed. It's common in a physics course to have to solve a problem in which you analyze a physical situation to determine the power rating. A problem like this one about a student doing a chin-up with a mass of 42 kilograms, lifting herself upward 0.25 meters in 1.3 seconds. Now in this case, we're gonna begin by listing what we know. We know the mass, the displacement, the time, and since it's an upward force to cause an upward displacement, the angle theta is equal to zero degrees. I'm looking for the power. My first step would be to determine the force. If this person lifts themselves upward at constant speed, then the up force has got to be equal to the down force. So we can safely say that the up force is equal to the force of gravity, m times g, 42 newtons times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and that's 411.6 newtons. Now I have to determine the work done in lifting herself 0.25 meters. So I'm going to take the force, multiply by 0.25 meters, and multiply by the cosine of zero degrees, and I get 102.9 joules of work. Now I'm going to calculate the power by dividing the work by the time. That would be 102.9 divided by 1.3 seconds, and I get approximately 79 watts. Our second and final example involves a horizontal motion. During a football workout, the line coach stands on a training sled with a combined mass of 245 kilograms as three linemen push the sled across the ground with a constant speed of 1.60 meters per second. The coefficient of friction, mu, between the sled and the ground is 0.825. We want to know the power delivered by the linemen. So as always, we're going to begin by listing what we know. We know the M, we know the mu, we know the velocity of the sled, and we know that the angle between the force the linemen apply and the direction that the sled moves is zero degrees. So now we can calculate the power. We'll begin by determining the force that the linemen apply to the training sled. That force would be equal to the force of friction since we have a constant speed motion. So the force of friction is always equal to mu times F norm. And on horizontal ground, that would be mu times the weight of the object, mu times mg. So we can substitute 0.825 for mu and, 80, and 245 kilograms for the mass and 9.8 newtons per kilogram for g, and we can solve for the force applied by the lineman. It's 1980.8 newtons. Now we know the force and we know the velocity. In an equation a few slides back said, the power is equal to the force times the velocity. So we can take our, our force, multiply it by the 1.60 meters per second, and multiply it by the cosine of zero degrees, and we end up getting 3169.32 watts, or rounding, we can say 3170 watts. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you can find on our website. We've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, a four problems from the calculator pad with problems, answers, and solutions, and a very understandable tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.